Does this drop it? Can you people get it? Clearly? The request to all of you, those who are even at the farthest end, if you can find another spot to talk, please discuss your important matters there. Ask a
always seems to be the second run in the ladder of evolution, the second stage of life, yet it has immense importance. If the human life can be considered to be of 100 years, then we can have four pointers. The first one is that of the studenthood. The second one is that of, is that of a householder. The third one is where the person now has successfully lived, brought up his children, lived the life of a householder, and there he is now at peace with himself to a great extent. And it is the life of retirement, which is called as the Vanakasta, where the person is not involved in the day-to-day -day activities to run the household. He is little withdrawn. Now he is able to give the the, the reins of the chariot to his sons, to his daughter, to his daughter-in-laws. He would trust them. And he peacefully sits back and watches the journey happen. For him, now he is able to hear the music which is more enchanting to him which constantly keeps calling him inside. That is Vanakast, turning towards the forest. And finally is the Sanyasashram, <coughs> where the person totally renounces anything, because he doesn't expect the world to deliver him anything. Sanyas, in a way, is not where a person is very harsh and cruel to himself. The word sanyas would mean giving up. And if you understand when is it a person gives up anything, you will discover that whatever becomes redundant, whatever then has become useless, whatever does not have a value, you are ready to give. So when you have found that something has delivered what it has to deliver and now holding on to it is of no use, you are ready to give it up. You go to the market, you bring so many things. There are boxes and bags and these bags that you collect. Now the very purpose of that bag or the box was to bring the goods home safely. Once that is done, you don't require it any longer. You are ready to give it up. This is the very, very psychology of renunciation, where a person is ready to give up, and giving up can happen only in discovering that it is no longer of any use to me. Sanyasi is not depriving yourself of pleasures and, you know, uh, you know, it is not a life of deprivation. It is not a life of somebody who is a recluse, who does not know how to, uh, you know, go about in society, or to become, who refuses to become a contributing member to the society, and therefore let him become a sannyasi. That is not the idea. Sannyasi is all together different. It is very sacred. It is the final stage of life. Over here, you cannot afford to have trial and error games. Let me try and maybe I will have another chance. Because this is the fourth stage of life, and therefore this is the final ashram. Though this, in this whole sequence of various stages of life, we find Grihastha ashram to be the second one, Yet, in a person's life, 
in a personal, on, you know, on a personal context as well as on a societal context, Grihastha Ashram is of great importance. That what can be achieved by an ascetic through his severe penance in a forest is also attained very easily by a Grihastha. Though we are going to discuss Ahalya, and we have to know that Ahalya is Gautama's wife. It is Grihastha Though Gautama may be living in a forest because he is a Rishi, for whom the idea of life is not to gather pleasure, to have more pleasures and fun and flourish whose philosophy of life is that life is meant for inner purification and therefore for him tapasya is important. You know when we replace the word tapasya with the word penance, it really does not deliver that meaning. The word tapa means to apply heat. Whenever, for example, the gold is cast into the fire in heat, the impurities get burned and that metal will come out shining. When the impurities are, are, are burnt down, this is the whole idea of tapasya. That's why it is called as tapa. And Gautama, though he is right there in the Grihastha he does not view this relationship as a relationship which is now meant only for comfort and pleasure or company. But this relationship is meant so that the inner sanctification can take place. So Gautama's whole idea of looking at life is that of tapasya and hence he is a rishi who dwells in a forest. And his wife is Arunati who happily has accepted that as the way of the life. She has never complained. And look at the other women and they are well, they are able to wear nice dresses. I am here in the forest and I get to wear only these, you know, coarse clothes. Better have we, let's go somewhere else. Change the place, change the city. You now change your job. She says, I'll happily be with you. I will support you in what, what you have chosen because she believes and she sees that what Gautama has chosen is not something that can be called as illegitimate, something that can be called as, uh, what do they say, idiosyncrasy, as in Gautama's idiosyncrasy. But she understands this is what the man values. Understands his greatness and she is ready to stand by him. For her, the hardships of the forest life are not something that she is paying the price for. She says, well, she had, there is a great deal of acceptance. This is Gautama and Arunda, what do they call uh, Ahalya's equation with each other. Wherein the philosophy of life is that of tapasya. And it is Grihastha And just to tell you about one small incident which comes in Mahabharata, you must have heard it somewhere or from someone, since people over here are, you know, very fond of doing satsang sometimes. There is this incident in Mahabharata, Shanti There is an ascetic, a young man who is doing, practicing his penance, asceticism as a recluse in a forest. And he is doing it very intensely with all matted locks grown on the head and all that. And 
he has just one rule for himself that he would go into the into into uh, what do they say the village or the town only once a day for diksha. And no sooner he gets the diksha of whatever two rotis, three rotis that he has to collect, he will quickly come back to the forest. He, is, he, he refuses to keep himself in the crowd. And he is very proud about his the path that he is following. One day, it is already afternoon, and he is about to leave for the picture. And just then, there is, there is a bird sitting on the top of the tree, and it drops its feces on his head. The man is furious because he has to now go wash, take bath, and matted drops. Not only 